cost volume profit analysis is what we use in cost behavior to predict costs. And this is our secret weapon. Now it's very important to understand the underlying assumptions that go beneath cost behavior analysis and prediction. So please take a look in your chapter on page, um, I think it's 259, on the assumptions that underlie cost volume profit analysis. So what it's going to show you is if I buy into those assumptions, then I will be able to come up with income statements um, of my future. So I'll be able to sit there and say, I want a net income of such and so. And since I understand the behaviors of my variable and my fixed costs, I can predict what the sales must be in order to get that bottom line. So the cost, volume, profit is talking about the three variables that as a manager you have control over. Now let's take a look at this income statement. Would you agree that total sales is equal to the sales price times the unit sold? Well, that makes sense. And would you agree with me that the variable, total variable cost of a, a company is going to be equal to that variable rate or that slope times the units produced? And that means then that the contribution margin, or CM, contribution margin, what it contributes, is going to be equal to the contribution margin per unit times the units produced and sold. And I'm uh, produced and sold. And I need to write this units produced and sold. That's one of the underlying assumptions, that the inventory levels do not change. And so the units you produce are also the units you sold, sell. So that's the contribution margin. The fixed costs are always given. Fixed are fixed. And then we can come up with the net income, which may be given or may be what we're aiming for. Now that's one way to do the cost, volume, profit analysis income statement. So selling price times the unit sold minus the variable rate or slope times the unit sold gives you your contribution margin per unit minus your fixed cost is net income. Another way you could say this is would you agree that sales are equal to 100% of sales, 100% of sales. So variable cost can be expressed as a percentage of sales. So I'm going to take the variable cost divided by sales and that will give me a percentage, won't it, times sales. And that's called the um, variable rate. Thus, I can also do this for contribution margin. If I take my contribution margin, divide by sales, well, I also get a percentage of sales is equal to the contribution. Yep. Fixed costs are fixed and net income. Now, what I've just said may or may not make any sense to you, so we really need to do a problem, don't we? So let's set one up, and then we'll go about solving it. And I'm going to use exercise 8, and we're just going to read through it right now and fit it into these formulas, okay? So sales minus variable costs equals contribution margin minus fixed costs is net income. In the problem, if I read it correctly, it says the company expects to generate a profit next year. That's good. It anticipates fixed manufacturing costs of 126,500. So fixed cost 126,500 plus it's going to have fixed administrative costs of uh, 82,030. So based on this, the total fixed cost for this company in the coming period is expected to be 208,530. So that's our total fixed cost. Okay? If variable costs are 462 and 275. So 462 
and 275 are the two kinds, product variable cost and period variable cost. Adding those together, the total variable cost is going to be $7.40 for every unit I sell or produce. This problem also tells me that the sales price, what I'm going to charge for these products, is $13.40. So does it make sense then, if I'm charging $13.40 for every unit produced and sold, and my variable cost is $7.40, that my contribution margin for every unit I sell is going to be the difference, or $6. Now based on this, I can either uh, say how many units I'm going to produce and sell and find net income or I can say I want a net income of such and so and figure out how many units I have to produce. So more soon.